All right, so again, welcome to Lizard Lab. We're gonna create some lizards. My name is Miranda Dowdy. I'm an educator at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, and I love lizards. And I love being creative, and um, I love having fun and recycling too. And so that's we're gonna incorporate all of that today in Lizard Lab. Um, but before we get started and really dive into it, I do want to introduce um, someone else who's gonna be participating in the program today, and that is Skelly Hunt, who... Also loves lizards, right, Skelly? I do. I'm a big lizard lover, and I'm not nearly as uh, crafty as Miranda is, but I really enjoy seeing the creations that she comes with because they are amazing, and they actually look like real lizards. So uh, at a couple times throughout the program, I'll chime in and tell you a little bit about the habitats of lizards and some specific examples. Um, but in the meantime, I'll turn it back over to Miranda, who's going to get the craft started. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, so let's get started. So um, while we are here at the beginning, I want to make sure that you have everything you need to create your own lizards. Um, so I have a big pile of stuff here beside me um, to kind of create my lizard and decorate my lizard. Um, so and the great thing about this is that you can use really whatever you want to. Um, we sent you a, a template for a lizard, but you don't have to use a template. In fact, I didn't use the template. I just kind of um, looked at the template and then sketched a lizard and cut it out. Um, you can have any kind of lizard shape that you want because this is your lizard and you are creating today. And so I have my lizard template. You can cut it out or you can just have the outline of it on a piece of paper. I also gathered, gathered some things just from around my house. So I have, um, a pine cone that I have started to kind of pull the scales off of just like this. And so you can just pull those off and then you have all these amazing little pieces to use. Um, I got a sweet gumball from my yard. Um, I just found this bag that's silvery. I thought I might want to use that. Um, I have some fun Skittles because who doesn't love Skittles? And so I thought that may, may be fun to use. Um, I even have little pieces of eggshell um, from a cooked egg that I took. And really anything. Um, I have some cupcake liners, so you can literally use anything. It can be stickers, um, scraps of paper, scraps of fabric, anything that you want. Um, I also have this piece of cardboard and I kind of started to, to peel off some of that outside paper. And so I just peeled that off and it revealed this really cool texture underneath. All right, so while you guys are um, gathering all of those things, of course, if you want your lizard to be a permanent lizard that lives around your house, then you'd want something like glue or tape to hold all those pieces down. But I am not gonna glue mine together because I want to um, put back those pieces of pine cone back in my yard so they can compost eventually and recycle the rest of it. Um, so while you are doing that, while you're gathering all of your materials, um, I wanna learn a little bit more about lizards. So Skelly, I've heard that there are over 6,000 species of lizards, and that seems like an amazing number to me. And I imagine that they, yeah, they live all over the world, right? And can yeah, you tell me right. about some of their habitats maybe? Yeah, so there are over 6,000 species, which is absolutely insane. That kind of blows other animal groups out of the water. And they have so many species because if you look at this map, everywhere that's shaded green is home to a lot of different species of lizards. And if you look over a, a really broad area like that, you can imagine the habitats and the environments are gonna vary a lot. So you have Australia where it's dry and arid in some places, you've got the deserts in uh, Africa, you've got rainforest in South America. Um, our own temperate climates up here in North America. And you can see the only places they don't live are those really far, far north uh, parts of Canada, um, Greenland, Siberia, and uh, down south where it's just ice. Uh, so really anywhere that there is even a reasonable temperature, those lizards can grow and thrive. And some examples of places they live are um, forest, of course. We have chameleons and geckos are really well known for living in trees, uh, hunting and, and hiding in there. We have uh, even more species of lizards that love deserts uh, with no trees at all. So that's a completely different habitat. And then we have uh, some that even live in aquatic environments, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. 
And of course, you see lizards all the time around your house, probably this because lizards can thrive in urban environments too. Uh, what kind of lizard are you going to be working on today, Miranda? So, you know, I've thought about it and um, with all the materials that I gathered and looking around at all the different habitats that lizards can live, I decided that I want to make a lizard that would live in my backyard that is adapted to the environment that I've provided for it. And so my yard is mostly actually kind of natural leaf litter and trees and things like that. So I'm going to make my lizard adapted to that kind of environment. And so um, as you see, if I have a lot of leaf litter, then the colors are gonna be a little bit browns and tans, um, maybe some darker blacks and stuff like that. So all of these materials really work well. There's a few that might stand out, but we'll talk about those later. Um, so I'm gonna start making the tail of my lizard. And to do that, I wanted to have kind of a textured tail. Like I showed you, I have this material earlier that I peeled off. So what I'm gonna do is just trace that on there. And you can see I've already done that once is just trace that on there with the marker that I have. And I'm gonna cut that out. And since I've already done that, I've shortcutted it. I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. But if you're working on your lizard, then you have time to do it um, while we're working along and while you're learning. So here is the tail that I cut. So I'm just gonna set that on there. Again, I'm not gluing mine together. And so it's just gonna live like that. I'm also gonna add these really cool pieces of this pine cone. And these pine cone scales, I don't know if you've ever picked up a pine cone and you really have to be careful when you're pulling it apart, but it has these kind of points on it. I don't know if you can see that it's kind of blurry. You see that sharp point on it? So I thought that might be a really cool armor for my lizard as well. So I'm just gonna start building those up. Yeah, while Maybe. you're putting those on there, Miranda, that uh, segment, that um, texture on the tail really reminds me of the segments of a tail of uh, like perhaps a leopard gecko or something. Are you familiar with uh, those types of tails? Um, I know I've seen them, them but I'm not sure exactly the purpose. I know that some lizards um, have really cool adaptations, which are ways to help them survive. So maybe they've changed a part of their body over time um, to look a certain way or have a certain function. So my lizard, for example, would have developed these rough bumpy scales on the back, perhaps for a defense, like an alligator has those osteoderms or those bony plates on its back to protect its back from um, predators, especially when it's small. Um, so my lizard, if it ever got hit on the back or bitten on the back, then it would be protected by these spiky scales. Very cool, yeah. And there are lizards like the Gila monster that have those osteoderms fused for protection. And those the segmented tail makes me think that maybe your lizard is able to drop off a segment of its tail if it's being chased by a bird or something. Um, those segments will provide an easy, clean cutoff for that bit of tail to come off. That is an excellent point because I do have lots of predators in my yard that would eat lizards. Like I have hawks that I see sometimes slurping down some of my little snakes that live in my yard. Um, so I think they would probably definitely love to eat a lizard. So it might be a good idea to have a way um, to save yourself in one of those situations. And I know that some of the lizards that live around here, like skinks, can drop their tails as well. So Skelly, I know that I've mentioned the word adaptations and some of the things that I'm putting on my lizard are really cool adaptations. Can you tell us a little bit more about some other cool adaptations that lizards have? Yeah, so you touched on this a little bit when you were talking about uh, your color choices for your lizard and uh, camouflage is one of the most important adaptations that a lot of lizards have. This picture shows a, a nice arboreal lizard living in the trees. And the skin of this lizard almost looks just like the lichen and, and bark of this branch. So they blend right in with their environment. And camouflage can be all about the colors and patterns matching the background, but it can also get really fancy and uh, include these amazing spines and ridges. And this leaf-tailed gecko, you almost can't tell the leaf of this gecko being different from the uh, leaves that it's on. That is an amazing example of camouflage. Yeah. Um, and then as far as adaptations go, lizards have um, these interlocking scales, uh, just like your pine cone uh, scales there. And those have a lot of different functions. One is protection from predators. Another is to lock in moisture. So 
imagine your uh, wizard was living in the desert, uh, like this thorny devil. Um, those interlocking scales, they don't allow moisture to evaporate from the skin like ours. Actually, their skin serves to suck up moisture from uh, moist sand because this guy is out looking for water in the desert. There's no standing water. There's no rain. Any water he gets has to be sucked up uh, in the grooves in his skin and then channeled to his mouth. Uh, here's another picture of a desert lizard. Um, this is a bearded dragon. Um, and bearded dragons, when they get a little bit of mist or dew, they pancake their backs, just like this picture here. And they put their heads down and lift their back legs up and all the moisture runs down their pancaked back towards their mouth. Um, other adaptations, lizards and deserts, burrow to get out of the, the hot sun. And if it gets too hot, they can get rid of extra heat by opening their mouths really wide. They can radiate a lot of heat from their mouths. So how's the really lizard? Cool. Yeah, those are really cool adaptations. And um, I think that my lizard would also be well adapted to the desert because he has kind of those thick overlapping scales and um, he looks like he would be a good rock climber too. So he might even be able to live in some of the, the forests around here that are kind of have these rocky outcroppings as well. Yeah, it looks like he's got some long toes and maybe some claws for climbing. Um, one species of lizard that I've seen, the fringe toed lizard, uh, has these special long fringy toes for running on the sand. But depending on where your lizard lives, his toes might look different. They might have claws for climbing or they might be more uh, webbed for, for swimming around. Or they might even look like a chameleon's feet where they look like tongs. And why do you think a, a lizard would have feet that grip like this? Ooh, that's a good question. I wonder if anyone knows why a, a chameleon has really cool, unique feet like that. I've given you a hint here in the description. <laughs> yeah, these, these feet are just designed to lock right onto branches because chameleons are arboreal. And they also have prehensile tails. You see their tails a lot of times on a little spiral. Those tails, they have complete control over them. And they can hang onto branches with those tails and with those feet. Um, we talked a little bit about marine iguanas earlier. Um, these guys have big tails for swimming and they have special teeth for eating seaweed. Oh, very cool. And that brings me to another point. So right now what I'm doing is I have these little pieces of eggshell and I'm just adding some scales on the head of my lizard just to give it some more texture and help it blend in because I feel like if I saw something that was all the same texture sitting out in the middle, um, then I would probably notice it a little bit more. So I'm just going to add some more texture to my lizard, a little bit of different colors to break it up because I've noticed that um, sometimes camouflage can look like a very obvious pattern, but um, in reality, it actually helps it blend in a little bit more. So right now I'm doing um, a snake ID challenge and I love copperheads. I think they're really beautiful and they have a very distinct pattern to me. But when I've seen them in the forest, um, you know, where they like to, to live and where they are really um, camouflaging against the, the dead leaf litter and things like that, they blend in amazingly. And it's really cool to see those pictures. But um, some of these lizards, you know, are just, are just so good at doing it. Like the, that leaf tailed gecko that you showed us. And so you mentioned that um, marine iguanas only eat seaweed and are adapted to do that. So what are other kinds of things that lizards eat? Uh, well, a lizard like yours probably eats a lot of invertebrates. So insects, uh, snails, uh, probably runs around looking for other small lizards to eat. Um, maybe even a small fish if he was near some water. Pretty much anything small enough to swallow a lizard will go after. Yeah. And so I imagine that like, um, depending on what you eat, probably you have different adaptations too. I know like chameleons have a, a really cool adaptation um, for how they catch their food, right? Yeah. They have a really long tongue, don't they? That shoots out. Yeah. I've seen it in action. It's, it's really amazing. It's long and sticky, like some frogs 
Um, and I guess if you're climbing around in trees and your um, prey item is all the way on another branch, then you probably don't want to have to climb all the way over to grab it. Yeah, if you've seen a chameleon um, in a tree, they don't move fast. They're not the type of predator that runs down their prey. They just sit and wait. And that's why they're so good at camouflaging and hanging on because they really need to sit very still for a long period of time. So that extra length on their tongue is really important. All right. So I think what I'm going to do now to my lizard is, you know, we talked a little bit about how lizards um, can drop their tails, right, to help protect them. But right now, all of my lizard um, is kind of camouflaged. And so I want to make the tail stand out a little more. So I have a few colorful things and something that I know that I would be attracted to if I found, I have some Skittles. So I have some nice colorful Skittles. So I'm going to make my lizard have a rainbow tail with these Skittles. And why would you want to be attracting attention to your tail if you were a lizard? Yeah. And so most lizards, um, can lose their tails and regrow them. Um, and it's not without any kind of um, issue because it takes a lot of energy to regrow a tail or to lose a tail. Um, but if I am a predator and I am coming after a lizard and I get its tail as a prize to eat its tail, then I'm pretty happy still. And I'm not gonna try to eat the rest of the lizard in, in some cases, and I, or at least I'm distracted by the tail enough that's wiggling around that he dropped off um, that the lizard can escape with his head, um, you can say in that way he'll survive to live another day. And so my lizard is the same way. So if something eats his tail, so if a hawk swoops down to catch him and he drops his tail and it wiggles away with those bright colors, um, then he might be able to run away and hide under a rock or some leaves to get away from that, um, that hawk and that predator. I bet if his tail is the easiest thing to see, that's gonna be the target. And it's yeah. always better to have someone going after your tail than your head. Yep, absolutely. So if, yeah, those bright colors are going to attract that predator and make it stand out a lot, a lot easier. Just kind of like, you know, there are some birds that you can look out in your yard, say um, a male cardinal is very bright red. And so if you have a male cardinal sitting behind a female cardinal who is brown, um, he's going to attract a lot more attention, right? It's for different reasons, but um, that is what the lizard's tail is. He's dry, trying to attract attention to the end of his tail. All right. And you know what? I think, I don't know if anyone else has these in their yards, these sweet gumballs, but they are very uncomfortable if you've ever stepped on them. And so I'm going to add another adaptation. This lizard is going to be just packed full of adaptations. So I'm going to move this skittle up a little bit and I'm going to put this spiky gumball right on the end of its tail. And so that's going to act as another level of defense. And so maybe he really doesn't want to lose his tail and maybe he wants to fight off a smaller predator first, or maybe he's using it to fight other males or something like that. And he can swing that gumball around and hit them. Wow. That is incredible. That reminds me of uh, a certain type of dinosaur with a big gumball tail. I don't know if you guys have seen those. I don't know the name of them. Oh yeah. Maybe somebody can tell us the name of, of, uh, Ooh, I, I have it in my head, but I'm not going to give it away in case somebody knows it. I bet Hugo knows it at least. Uh, someone in the chat, Hugo says it's the Ankylosaurus. Yes. So maybe that's an example of convergent evolution where uh, this lizard and that dinosaur separately evolved this big old gumball tail for protection. Yeah, and I know that there are some lizards. We um, used to have lizards as program animals. I don't know if we still have any at the museum. Um, I think Carrie mentioned the year of mastics and it has kind of an armored tail that it can whip around and, and uh, swing at predators. Very cool. All right, so I don't, let me see what else I wanna do to my lizard. Oh, you know what? My lizard doesn't know how to eat yet, so. Hmm. I think I'll give my lizard a, a rolly up tongue too. So I'm just going to take a piece of paper. I'm just going to wrap it up on itself. Roll it up like this. And that way, when my lizard wants to catch a prey, because he's blending in really well, he doesn't want to draw too much attention to himself. He, maybe, maybe he's a predator lying in wait. 
Yeah, and some lizards, um, like bearded dragons, for example, have a split on the end of their tongue. And when they extend their tongue, it opens up. And then when they retract, it pulls together. So it helps pull in prey. Wow, I did not know that. That's really cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, and you know what else? I did say my lizard was a male. And so he might use his tail to maybe attract some some females, but he's, I want him to have something a little bit more colorful. So I'm going to take um, this cupcake liner here and find my scissors. I'm going to make a nice little dewlap, which is just that kind of, it's like an extra skin flap right underneath the chin, right? That's right. You might have seen these on green anoles. They have that red dewlap. Um, bearded dragons have something similar where they puff out their beard and, and turn it black. And then I've also seen maybe something a little more like yours called a frilled neck lizard that displays out uh, a brightly colored uh, fan. Yeah, so mine oh. is kind of like a frilled neck lizard. It's nice and wide. And I have to be careful since my lizard is not glued together. Now he's so beautiful. And of course he's showing off now, but um, really he can hide that beautiful frill most of the time. So we're not, he's not attracting any predators to his head. All right, and I think I'm just about done with my lizard. I think I might add a few more scales to his legs just to add a little bit more texture. So my lizard, is I think about ready to go off in my yard and live. So now I don't know if there's anything, anything we're missing about lizards, Skelly, that we haven't talked about. Does anyone have any questions about lizards? I can't think of anything at the moment, but if anyone has any questions, they should put them in the chat and we'll answer. Or if they want to share maybe something they did on their lizard that, that you forgot. Nancy was asking if, if your lizard has claws, and I think you Ooh. said it does? Yes, my lizard does have claws. So I have lots of trees, and so my lizard might want to climb a tree to hunt for um, a partner or escape a predator or even maybe look for some food. Yeah, around here we have a lizard called the Eastern Fence Lizard, and um, I remember when I, when I see these, they always run up a tree immediately if they're not always already on a tree. And if you come towards them, they'll run around the other side of the tree and go up a little bit and wait. And if you go around to that side, they'll do the same thing, but they never go far away. Hugo wants to know, what is the scientific name of your lizard? Have you thought about that? Ooh, I have not thought of that. Let's see. Something with Skittle in it, maybe? A lot of times the scientific names yeah. describe how your lizard looks. Maybe like... Get a little kiss. <laughs> Carolinsis. Carol Carolinsis. Skittles Carolinsis. That's great. I like that. Let me see if I can spell that in the chat. Oh, Carrie. Pinconis. <laughs> <laughs> I like Carrie's more. That's a great description. <laughs> um, at the very end, if you are making a lizard, we want you to show your lizards off. We won't check in on you um, during the program because we are recording. But at the very end, if we want to turn on your video and tell us about your lizards, that would be amazing.